Hey guys, this is Ben from Myers Woodshop, and today we're gonna do our first video in uh, perhaps a series on the basics of Carbide Create. So it is 11 24 2018, it's almost time for Christmas. So we are going to make a tree topper for our Christmas tree, uh, make a simple star. So we're gonna open Carbide Create. Now I have the most recent version, it's actually a beta version. Uh, build 316. This is a build on 7 20 2018 as of today, so things may look just a tad bit different, but overall the concept will still be the same. So, anytime you open up Carbide Create first, you're going to see this big square in the middle. That's actually our waste board uh, or our material. And we're going to click on this gear in the top left. That's the first thing we'll do. And that's going to set up the job size. This is the first thing we need to do every time. Um, and if you haven't opened this up before, if it's your first time, you're going to look at this one called Machine. Click that drop down box. It's going to list all the machines that Carbide 3D sells. And you're going to select the machine you have. Now, these are just different size Shea Pocos. And I have the Shapoko XXL, so that's the one I'm going to select. That tells the machine how big of a cutting area you have. And the XXL is about 31 inches in diameter, so that's what we're going to do. So at the top, stock size, this is the piece of wood we're going to be cutting out, or any material that you choose, plastic or uh, metal. But we're going to mostly be doing wood. So we want to tell the machine how big of a piece of wood we have. And today we're going to make a 12 inch diameter or 12 inch square star. So we're going to say we have a 12 inch wide. That's the X right here from left to right. As you're looking down at your waste board uh, on the Shapoko, your board will be from left to right X, which is 12 inches. And then Y is from front to back. That's going to be the height. And that is going to also be 12. So we're going to assume we have a 12 by 12 piece of wood. Next, we're going to choose the thickness of the stock. See in this picture right down here on the bottom, that's our waste board. So that's the piece of wood laying on the waste board. You're looking at it from the side. And then where the red dot is, that's the top of the piece of wood. So we're going to use a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood and that translates to 0.75 inches. Uh, it's a pretty general size for cutting. And you have a drop down for the top or bottom we're gonna measure from. And I'm gonna say 99% of the time you're gonna choose top here. So we're gonna measure from where the top of the piece of wood is down to the bottom of the waste board. You can do this with a caliper, a digital caliper. It'll tell you exactly how it is, how thick it is. We're just going to go uh, assume that the manufacturer of the piece of wood made it 0.75 perfectly. Next, we're going to choose toolpath zero. This is where your end mill is going to start um, when you're cutting a piece of wood. So if you look at the picture at the bottom left right now, you have a red dot. This is our square piece of wood. And we're going to start our cutting with the end mill at the bottom left. You can also look at the right. Over here, our big piece of wood, this is the preview screen. We have a red dot. That is showing where the end mill will start. It'll start at the bottom left. You have to tell it where it's going to start every time. And you have a drop down here. Lower left, that's probably, again, 95% of the time you're going to use. That's the majority of where things start on most CNC's. Center left, you see it moved up there to the center left side. Top left. It's a very top left corner and then center. That's right in the center of the piece of material. Now, generally, I'm either going to use lower left or center. I'm going to start center if I have some clamps that might be in the way and I'm going to hit it with the end mill, maybe along the top and bottom. I don't want this to start at the bottom where a clamp is. I'll start it in the center. But today, we're just going to start at lower left and we're not going to worry if we have clamps. Next, we're going to choose the material and we're going to do it into uh, some softwood. We're just cutting some plywood here. So we're going to choose softwood. Again, we have the machine. We've chosen our correct machine. And the retract height. Uh, you could leave this at 10 millimeters. Um, but what this does is it uh, is how far up the bit will move off of the wood while cutting 
as it travels to a different place to cut again. So 10 millimeters is pretty generous. It'll move up pretty high, move over, bring down, cut again, move up 10 millimeters, move over, move down, cut again. Uh, I like to keep it somewhere maybe in the four millimeter. The smaller you can have this number, the faster it'll cut because it won't have to travel up and down so many times. So uh, I'm gonna turn it to four. Um, if you wanna be very safe, if you're first trying it out, just leave it at 10. Uh, I'm changing it to four for mine. And then finally we have inches and millimeters. If you like to work in millimeters, which usually I do, uh, you can click millimeters, see all of my numbers have changed here to millimeters. I can see a little bit more exact, um, but in the US here, most things are in inches. We're gonna leave it for inches right now. Uh, so there we have it. And document background is not important for us at this moment. I, I honestly have used it uh, one time. And then you have clear drawing over here. We have nothing drew, drawn. So we're gonna leave that blank. These two, you're probably not gonna use very often. But we're gonna hit okay. And you can see my square has changed. So this is my piece of wood on the shape Hoko. It's a 12 by 12 square. Now, if you're using a mouse, which I highly suggest you do, um, you're gonna click with the right click. And if you hold that in, you can move it around. If you use the mouse wheel, zoom back and in. And uh, the left click will be a dragging tool. And then you can click reset view up at the top. That explodes it to as big as the screen will go. So I like to zoom out a little bit so I can see what's going on. And there we are so far. So the great thing about this is that we just want to do a simple star. We don't even need to design this on our own. We can go down to the internet and find ourselves a star that's already made. So here we are, we search for star outline SVG. SVGs are vector images. And we found one. We found one right here. We're gonna choose five pointed star dot SVG. So we're gonna go ahead and open that. Brings us to the five pointed star. Wikimedia Commons is a good place to find some. We're gonna click the original file and we're gonna go ahead and save that. And save it as an SVG. So we'll save that. And here we are back in Carbide Create, and we're about ready to do our design. So that's what design is for. This is the first thing we'll do. Once we have our design, we'll move on to the Toolpath tab. So once we're in design, we're going to go ahead and start importing our pictures. Um, there's two options here. We have import from design elements. So there's already pre-made uh, pictures and elements we could find, sports, ribbons, uh, star. Look, a star is already here, but we could use this one if we wanted. And that brings a star in. But we're not going to do that. We're going to reset the view. We're going to bring in our own SVG file, our own image. This way you have an example for bringing in something other than a star if you wanted to. So here's my five-pointed star.svg. We're going to click that and hit open. And that brings in this star, this beautiful star. So if we click on it with our left click, we can drag it anywhere we want within, uh, or we can even drag it off, but we can drag it within our uh, board. So if we wanted to cut a star at the top left, we could drag it up there. This is the size, 3.33 inches by 3.125 inches. There's one element, so that means there's one vector in this. Uh, if we had, let's say, four different stars, we'd have four number of elements. And you can choose to group or ungroup. Uh, we only have one, so we don't have anything to group. If we had two stars, we can group them. And when we clicked on one point of the star, all the stars would move. Uh, but we don't want any groups, so we're just going to hit Done. So on the left, you can see as I move the star around, it's changing the X and Y coordinates. So you can see where it's going. But we're not really worried about that right now. Um, we're going to orientation. You can rotate the star. Uh, you just type in a degree and hit apply. But we don't want to rotate it. 
we want to scale it, which is the first one, it's resize. So we're going to click on that, and you can see the width is 3.33 and the height is 3.125, but we want a 12 inch square. We want it to fit this whole square, so we're going to type in width of 12. Apparently that's a scale factor of 3.6, it automatically did the math. We'll hit apply. You can see that now it takes up our whole area. If I move it down a little bit, it just barely fits in, but that's okay. That's all we want. We need it to fit within our square. And once we hit apply, it's kind of all around. Now if we click any of these other ones, this one's rotate, this one's mirror, and a star, it wouldn't really matter, but it'll, it'll flip it uh, left to right, horizontal. This one I'll flip it vertically, so if I flip it, you can see it flipped it vertical. This one won't show anything because it's a mirror image on left and right side. And this one's an offset path where we can have our, our star, we have one line. We can Let's say we offset it by one inch and hit apply. Now we have an offset square on the inside. So if we wanted to just pocket out something on the inside or we wanted the inside to be hollow now we have two lines to work with but we don't want that we're going to click on the one we don't want and we're going to click the delete button on our keyboard and it has deleted that so if you click anywhere outside of this vector line it'll take you back to design so what we want is this to be in the center of our board and typically we'd have something that says center but since we only have one vector, I don't know why this is something with Carbide Create, we need a second vector to align them to each other. So let's just make, for instance, a real quick circle. I'm going to click on this circle tab. This is the center, and then I'm going to drag it out. I'm not touching any buttons, I'm just moving the mouse. We're going to make a circle. And we're fine with what it is, we just needed a second vector to align to this board. So let's select both vectors. I'm going to just click and drag like this. Now I have them both selected. Or you can click on one, hit control, and click on the other. And now I have these two vectors selected. And you can see we have something new that showed up. Alignment tools. We're going to click on the alignment tool. And we're going to align to center. So we want align centers to the stock right down here reference we can align to last selection so this one's dashed and this one's not so if we stick it where it is right now and we hit done oop, we're going to center it it moves the star the circle right on center of the star but we want the star to be on center of the square so we're going to align to the stock which is the piece of wood then we're going to come up here and we're going to align it this one's center vertical and horizontal which would be center and we click it now you can see we're aligned perfectly center to our stock. We'll hit done. And we don't want this circle anymore. So we're going to click out, click on that circle, and click delete. That put our simple shape directly in the center of the size of our piece of wood. And now we have our star ready to cut out. So we'll now move to toolpath, which is up here. We're going to click that. You can see we have no toolpaths shown because we need to select a vector, which we only have one. We're going to click the star, and that created something new up here. Create toolpath, contour, v-carve, or texture. Contour is simple cutting out shapes. V-carve is with a v-bit, as the letter shows, is a pointy bit to where we're going to carve, like engrave. We're not going to cut all the way through necessarily. And texture will give just a textured random cutting. 90% of the time, you'll probably be using contour. So we're going to click on contour with our star selected. Now the first thing we have is tool. We have number 102, a 0.125 inch um, bit selected. And we're going to click on edit, and you can see Carbide Create comes with all kinds of bits included in itself. I'll go over another video showing this bits and what they do, but for now, just stick with me and we'll choose a uh, quarter inch bit, 
which is one fourth or 0.25. So we'll find the 0.25 and we have two of those. We have a 0.25 in ball and a 0.25 in end. The number 201 is the one that came with your machine and it is a large bit for cutting out simple shapes. And the end is the flat part of an end mill. The ball that's used for 3D carving it's a ball, round-ended uh, ball end mill. But we're going to choose end, the number 201 that came with your machine. Set speeds automatically. We're going to leave it just like that because uh, this is a science within itself. Although it will be super conservative, when you're first starting out, it's best to just leave it the way it is. I'll go over another video showing my recommended feeds and speeds for each bit. So set speeds automatically fills in cutting parameters and speeds and feeds automatically. So we won't worry about that. So this first part is done up top. We selected number 201, which is the one that came with our bit. And it filled in all the information we needed. Next part, cutting depth. Start depth. We want to start at the very top of our board, which is zero. Zero, zero, zero. So we'll use stock top. There's a button right here you can click, and that's at the top of our board. Most of the time, you'll never mess with this. Just leave this at zero. Now the max depth, this is how far down we want to cut, and we want to cut it all the way out. So if we, if you remember when we go back, we have a three-quarter inch board, which is 0.75 inches, and we want to cut all 0.75 inches. That'll cut through the board and cut the star out of our shape. So we can manually put that in, 0.75. Or if we forget what it was, let me just change it to some arbitrary number right here to show you. We can click Use the Stock Bottom, and you see it automatically filled out 0.750. So that is 3 quarter, 0.75. So now we know that it'll cut all the way down through our material and cut out this simple star. Next is Offset Direction. You can see the picture in here. So this square is our black star, and the blue that you can see over here on the right of the big picture, that's where the tool, the center of the tool is going to cut. And you can see right here it's on the inside on the left, and this is the tool cutting. But I don't want to cut inside because it'll cut my star smaller. I want it to cut all the way on the outside up to the edge of this star. So we're going to choose outside right. You can see my blue has changed. And now the toolpath is outside of the star that I drew. And it's going to follow this and cut all the way through. And it'll cut my star out. Now you have the option for pocket. And pocket will cut out everything inside. You can see the blue. The blue lines are where the end mill is going to travel and cut. So it'll cut the star out from the center and there'll be nothing left. It'll be all the white on the outside will be left. That stock will be there, but the blue will be pocketed out and cut out and be a void. And then no offset is where the bit will travel directly along the lines of the um, line that you put on there. But I want outside right because I want the star to be exactly 12 as big as I could make it. So it's going to travel along the blue. Next is tabs. So when you're cutting through here, you're going to cut, and then eventually you're going to cut it all the way out, and this might shift in some way. So you want tabs to hold it in place. So we have to select our vector that we want to put tabs on. And that's the star. We only have one vector. And we're going to hit Edit Tabs. You can see we have no tabs at this point. If you had some tabs in there, you can click Clear Tabs, and then I'll remove them all. Tab width, tab height. Width is how wide you want them. If you got something you really need to be secure, you can go wider. Tab height is how tall. Again, the bigger these numbers are, the more secure it'll be, but you'll have to do a little extra hand work to cut these tabs out. So we're just going to select one tab. We're going to leave it the way it is. We're going to select one tab here. You can see the X is where one of our tabs is. And I'll put one maybe over here. Somewhere on the flat part, you don't want to put it in a curve because they are very hard to cut out. 
and you want it to be very straight. So try to find a flat spaced vector area where you can click a tab. But I'm putting two, that should secure that in place. It tells me now number of tabs two and we'll hit okay. And then we're gonna name this toolpath. You can leave it as toolpath one, but I'm gonna say cut out star outline. So we know uh, this toolpath is going to cut the star outline out. And we'll hit OK. So that's our first star cut. Now down below, now down below you can see toolpath simulation. We're going to drop it down and let's say we're cutting pine, we're cutting a piece of plywood. This doesn't really matter. This is just showing you a simulation. So you can leave it as a lumen. It's just going to color uh, the background a specific color. And we're going to click. You have these options to show toolpath, show rapids, show simulation. We're going to click show simulation. It's going to calculate. And here's our piece of wood. So if I remove the toolpath, you can see that it is going to cut. our piece of wood. It's showing a little sliver. Sometimes this is a little off, but now you can see how it's going to cut it out. The toolpath shows the green is showing where where the tool will go, and you can see as you turn it, you can rotate this. It's going to all these greens are how many times the toolpath is going to the tool is going to go down and cut. So we're going to go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 passes it's going to take to cut all the way through. And you can see the red right here. This is where we're gonna start it. It's gonna move over and then start cutting. It'll go in a star pattern and it'll just keep going round and round until it cuts it all the way. So if you click show simulation, it'll show it. Hide simulation, it'll go away. So if you wanted to stop there and just cut out a simple star, there you are. We're going to take this one step further. We want it to make it look like multiple pieces of wood have been glued together, a little bit like a shiplap. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the polyline tool. And it says click on your first point. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And we're just going to select where we think we want pieces of wood to look like. So we're going to go across here. We're not too worried about where it goes. So I clicked the first line, I dragged it over, clicked the second line. You can see it's following me around, but I want to finish right there. So we're just going to drag all the way over to done. And it added a line right there. So we're going to think, where do we want another line? We're going to click somewhere in the white space to get our line tools back up. Create the vector. And we're going to choose maybe here. So I click the first time. We're going to click here. Click done again. So that gives us a line there and a line here. And then we'll do one more line, maybe around here. Click here to here. I click done. And now you can see we have three pink lines. You have to imagine this being cut out and these lines are just showing up here. So we have three lines. So let's go back to toolpath. So we have our star shape cut out on the outside. Now we want to, all three of these lines cut the same, so we're going to select, make sure we don't have the star selected, I'm clicking in the white space, we're going to select the first bottom line, you can see it changed to yellow, hold control on your keyboard, click the second line, you can see that's now yellow, and the third line, click that, we have three lines selected and they're all yellow, and we're going to do a contour, because we're just going to draw a line straight across them. We're going to use 201 again. We're fine with how big of a piece of uh, how wide the line will be. We're going to use stock top. Remember when stock bottom was 0.75? That's because we're cutting all the way through. Well we don't want these lines to cut all the way through. We barely want to cut across it. Um, we just want to put kind of an engraving line across it to make it look like some pieces of wood were glued together. So we're going to choose a number smaller than the max depth. And that way we know we won't cut all the way through. 
we're going to make it, let's say, 0.15. So we're going to cut into it, making these vertical lines, or these horizontal lines, we're going to cut at 0.15 depth. We're going to choose no offset because we want to cut right along the lines. So it'll cut right along the lines. It won't cut to the top, bottom. The center of the line will be where the center of the bit goes. We don't have to put any tabs because we're not cutting anything out. And we're going to choose this toolpath. We're going to rename it. We're going to call it uh, Horizontal Lines. And we're going to hit OK. And you can see in group one, we have the first one called Cutout Star Outline and then horizontal line. We actually want to cut the horizontal lines first because if we cut the star out first this will kind of be hanging and then we'll come back and cut again with the horizontal lines and it might uh, throw it off. It might uh, This material might twist or uh, move some way so we want to cut these lines first because we're not cutting anything out and then cut the star out. So we'll just click on horizontal lines we'll right click on it and we'll move up. So you have edit operation, disable, delete. We can delete if we made something wrong or we can move up. You can see it just changed to horizontal was the first one and cut out stars the second one and it's going to cut out in order of operations. So the top one is going to be done first, the second one's going to be done second and so forth. Now uh, you can see it'll cut the horizontal lines out and then it will cut out the star outline and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and show the simulation. And you can see now that the these lines that are horizontal do not go all the way through like these ones uh, the cutout did. So if you can imagine the outside parts that are getting cut off gone you can see the star and it just has three lines through it. Uh, and there's the tool paths. You can see it'll come up, follow the red, and then I'll start cutting, and then come up this way, and then start cutting, and then come up this way, cut across, come all the way down to the bottom of the star, and cut out the star. So let's hide that. Now, what I have the good thing about both of these uh, operations is that they both use the same tool as in the same size end mill. If you had two different end mills here you would have to stop between each operation and change the bit out. And in order to do that I find the best way is to, let's say this is uh, one operation and this is the second, go ahead and right click and disable one of them and then you would save this G code and then you would right click and disable the other and right click and enable so you would enable the second one and disable the first one and save the G code into two separate G codes. Um, you'll learn more about that running G code later but for right now we'll leave both on because these are the same bit so we don't need to change a tool so it's perfect that's why I didn't really want to change a tool it makes it a whole lot easier the less tool changes you can do, the easier it is for you. And finally, if we're happy with what we have here, we're going to click Save G Code down at the bottom. You're going to find a place to put it. Uh, I'm going to save it at the desktop. It's going to save it as a carbide G Code. It's a .nc file. And we're going to choose this, we'll uh, say Tree Topper Star and save the g-code and the g-code is totally separate than the carbide create file if you want to manipulate this file and save this file again make sure you come up to the top and click save as now you can see this is a different file it's .c2d carbide create file this file is the file that makes the g-code the g-code is what you send to the machine through Carbide Motion, their separate program that tells the machine how to move, but you can't open that file and edit it. The Carbide Create file is the one you want to save. We'll call this Star Tree Topper. You could have named it the same, but either way. So I saved it. Let me close this and show you. 
uh, treetopper.nc and startreetopper.c2d. Okay, if you click on the C2D, we're going to use Carbide Create to open it. And you open it that way, it won't ever open. It's a it's an odd thing with Carbide Create. You have to go to Open, and here it is, Star Tropper C2D. It's not the G code file, it's the design file. So you have the design file, and then you have the G code running file to cut out. Two separate things, it's a little bit confusing. But that's why at the top here, you want to always make sure you're saving this. And then once you're in Toolpath, when you save G code, it saves it. Uh, as some code for the machine to run. And then once you're done and you're ready to cut out, you'll open Carbide Motion. And, and once in Carbide Motion, you'll load the .nc file. And I'll show this in a separate video in the series. All right, guys, I really hope that helped you out designing something really simple in Carbide Create. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. If this helped you at all, make sure to hit a uh, thumbs up and click subscribe. I'll put out more videos going into more advanced of Carbide Create, Carbide Motion. And in the next video, I'll show you how to cut this star out on your machine. Stay tuned.